Without this collective, big tech would get away with breaking the law without even paying a fine. Governments could monitor your most intimate conversations and surveil you when you organize for social change. The Edry Network has been protecting and promoting digital rights for all during the last 20 years. In the last 20 years, the world around us changed. 10 years ago, you would have seen a completely different scenario that you see right now. Generally speaking, we were not really talking about what the impact of big tech was on the world. Today, digital technology is everywhere. When we order meals, when we move, when we organize as a group, or when choosing who we love. Life is going to become digital. You should care about digital rights if you care about human rights. The internet does open up incredible possibilities for connection, for knowledge. People, and especially younger generations, are very, very aware of the powers and promise of digitalization. Of course, it's important to embrace new technologies, to have new means to communicate, new tools in our hands in order to make our lives better. But at the same time, we have to understand that there are companies that are creating these technologies. There are states that could use the technology in order to oppress us, in order to surveil us. Well, I think that we could see a turning point after 2016. The Brexit elections, Trump election, Cambridge Analytica a few years later, a really fast build-up of scandals. Digital technology promised us freedom, meaningful connection and progress. But instead, many current uses of digital technology cause harm. And why is that? Big tech's profit and toxic growth will always come first, second, and third. Big tech's impacts on all of us and the erosion of our democracies are consequences of their current business model, or footnotes on a corporate profit report. We are talking about immense concentration of power. These are really huge companies. Like an ego trip. <laughs> Of, of these technology companies to be able to see no end to the frontier that they can reach. Like an inherently colonial sort of dynamic of we can do anything and nothing can stop us. And it's not only companies. Digital technology has also given governments around the world unprecedented means to abuse power, to watch and control us. Governments also use digital technology in ways that amplify oppression and discrimination on already criminalized and marginalized people. States thinking that all sorts of different types of technology are an almost magical solution to a lot of really complex societal problems. Emotion recognition technologies at the EU's border to supposedly detect if people applying for visas are lying. Um, we've seen streets being equipped with high definition facial recognition cameras. In the past, you could be really sure if you're like outside of the street talking to a friend that nobody was listening in. Those conversations are now taking place. On some platforms, whatever you have, it's really terrifying to know that there could be someone watching. There is a capacity to identify and track people everywhere they go all of the time and can have a really, really damaging impact on journalists, activists and anyone that just has a right to exist freely in a public space. Will those systems be a way to over-surveil the already over-surveilled? And then in the policing space as well, we're increasingly seeing AI systems to predict who and where crime will happen and we're massively concerned that that will increase already existing patterns of racial profiling and the redirecting of policing into already over-policed neighbourhoods. But it doesn't have to be this way. Instead of technology controlling us, we can exercise control and make technology work for us, our rights and our planet. We can only do that if we act together. Activists, lawyers, technologists, impacted communities from all over Europe and beyond have one message. The future must be ours to shape. We're creating policy that's supposed to work for 27 member states to a really diverse set of people. So there's really no other way to do it than do it together. By having this really resilient, strong digital rights field, we're able to use all sorts of tools at our disposal. There was a big gap in Greece when it comes to digital policy issues. Their work was actually very empowering and very inspiring for us in order to create homo digitalis. We're always up against 
people and organizations that are much better funded, better positioned, and knowing that you're not alone out there is really powerful. Let's hold big tech to account. Let's set limits to state surveillance. Let's reimagine technology. Edry and its partners will continue contesting big tech's power and demanding change in the way we regulate them. Edry was always one of the organizations that was at the forefront at countering uh, big tech's lobbying and really advocating for changes that would protect users and, and society at large. And when governments have their eyes on us, we watch them back. Taking governments to court about these mass surveillance initiatives so that sometimes we can actually stop bad laws from even being put forward. And we also do a lot of work to mobilize people, to raise awareness of these threats, um, to help people understand, for example, why surveillance doesn't equal security. Edry calls on states to ensure justice and dignity for all, and not to treat us as suspects of a crime. We want to be able to speak freely, to mobilize social change and document injustice. We do not want to live in a society of fear and suspicion where we self-censor because we're constantly watched. We really want to get to the heart of what it means to be a human in this day and age. Challenge power because you say there's a limit to that accumulation, there's a limit to what you can take from us and there's a limit to what you can do. We can break up the companies, we can make them smaller. Everything is within scope. Empowerment and taking power back to envision and create a future that we like to have. The idea of what it could be and what it could mean to people is what keeps me going. So this is something that doesn't happen overnight, yes. It's something that de demands a lot of effort and a lot of devotion. The continued existence of the EDRI network and of digital civil society and more broadly you know, human rights and social justice organisations is only going to get more critical. Edry and his allies want a world in which people live with dignity and vitality in the digital age. Together with hundreds of organizations and thousands of people, Edry will continue to defend our cause. Will you join our movement?